Even though it seems like we've all collectively gone through a lot this year, some definitely more than others, here are five signs you're doing much better than you think. You changed a lot in the past year, even if it's in ways you didn't plan for or expect. To change is to grow, and there are many ways we can evolve beyond what we usually measure ourselves with. You overcame hardship, even if it felt unbearable in the moment, you lived through it and grew stronger because of it. Or maybe the experience taught you to be gentler on yourself and those around you. You chose discomfort over complacency, even if it's in small ways, to remind yourself to do the more challenging thing that'll help you in the long run, rather than the easy thing that feels good in the moment. You learned to listen to your inner voice. Even if it meant going against the grain and possibly disappointing others, you're alive, able, and breathing. Even if this seems like a given, it truly is our biggest blessing to be able to live another year. Hello, sweetest potatoes. I wanted to start today's video off with a little mental reset to help us get in a better mind space and to just feel good about ourselves so that we can dream from a place of abundance versus scarcity and play offense versus defense. Having put our home together in week one and got our finances in order in week two, both videos I'll link down below, let's shift our focus this week to careers because it's something we spent almost a third of our lives on. I remember seeing this graph in my early 20s, which is why I tried so hard to figure out what I wanted to do with my career, even though I had no idea what I wanted to do at that time. I knew in the depths of my core that I did not want to wake up one day in my 40s or my 50s with a full-blown midlife crisis, asking myself why I work so hard and for what. I believe then that our careers are something we can shape and mold to fit our larger purposes. And I know now, having walked the past five, six, seven years that I've walked, that it is possible even though it is not easy and it takes a lot a lot a lot of sacrifices and although my career online has been more on the unconventional side so maybe not as relatable the emotions we go through and the feelings we feel of self-doubt anxiety confusion with where we are with where we're going it's all very universal i'm ironically and maybe not so ironically feeling more stagnant and stuck and motivated and inspired do i keep going what is the path forward? Can I do this forever? Do I even enjoy doing what I'm doing? With thoughts of my career being so front of mind, I wanted to share how I'm going about mapping out the future. This is important because if we know who we are and what we want, we won't be swayed as easily by shiny objects, what ifs, and comparison. Just like how we've been breaking up the previous weeks, the goal is to spend at least 15 minutes every day over the next week to focus on one specific aspect of our lives. So feel free to break down the following reflections and questions as you see fit. Number one, reflect on the past year as it pertains to your career. I feel like I've known for a while that something hasn't been working for the past few years. I've, I've been feeling like something's been missing, but I just didn't have the mental bandwidth or the emotional capacity to really figure out what it is until I moved out of New York City and had a lot more time to myself to process and think and go through and all these realizations came out in a beautiful video. And as you guys can see, I haven't been posting a lot of videos because I felt like I wanted to give myself time and space to figure out what I even wanted to create and what the next version of Rowena is going to be. Lowlights, I did not produce as much. I doubted myself more than usual this year because I'll get to that in a little bit. And I don't, I don't feel less connected with you all. Were there any pleasant surprises for unexpected ways you've grown? I recently watched the Emma Chamberlain podcast with Colin Samir. She called YouTube an addiction and it truly is an addiction, especially as a creator. And I think I'm just learning to distance myself, not to distance myself, but just to have a healthier relationship with this job. Yeah, any creators watching this, I would definitely recommend that podcast because it's like therapy. Colin Samir, they're truly their therapy. So this is where I currently stand. And definitely excited to rebuild and how can we rebuild by reframing what voices we've internalized we need to know why we think the way we do before we can go beyond it is it parents is it peers is it media is it entertainment is it people online 
You know, whatever it is that is influencing your definition of what it means to be quote unquote successful. Ever since we're kids, everyone around us tells us this is what it means to be successful. Get a high paying job, get a job that is high in status, get a job that is secure, or this is the path and only path that will help you become successful. When you really think about these voices that you've internalized on what it means to be successful, whose voice is the loudest? Do we want this voice to continue to be the dominant voice? And I'm pretty sure for most of us, that's a no. So my inner voice, I believe we all have many inner voices. Half of it is me being very critical of myself. The second part is this inner voice that's been calibrated by what I consume on social media. For example, what I see other people doing, what I see other creators, whether they're starting their businesses, whether they're selling products, whether they're doing courses, whether they wrote a book, whether they're going to events. When I see that, this side of me is like, oh, how come you're not doing that? Or, ooh, maybe you didn't strike while the iron's hot and you're becoming more and more irrelevant. Or maybe your excuse of not being good at social media is actually what's holding you back from being as successful, more successful than you could have been. In moments of weakness, I do get very, very, very hard on myself and wonder why I'm not doing all of those things. But in moments of clarity, I realize I don't want any of those things. When I really ask myself, what do I want out of life? Who is in it and what am I doing? None of those things matter, but I'm human, we're human, and sometimes we get distracted by shining things, which is why it's so important for us to get clarity on what is truly important to us. I think I'm just very conflicted and very conflicted because I have many interests and there's many things that I would like to do, but I think that's mostly me thinking from a human ego perspective, whereas the higher, not the higher level of me, but you know, like I've talked about, there's the Buddha nature and then there's the human side within all of us if we believe in gods or higher powers, or you know, the God side and then the human side. And the God side is the side that like knows the truth of the universe and what is important and why it is that we're here and the mission that we're supposed to fulfill while the human side is what gets distracted and yeah I just it is it is what it is and it's not it's not what I it's not how I would like to be living my life mm -mm. No, sir. No, thank you. <laughs> so now that we're more aware of this, we can recalibrate this inner voice. Instead of what you think you need to do to be successful, what does success actually mean to you? This is a very personal question. It can also change as we grow. So the way that I reframe this question to make it more relevant to myself and to make it speak more to myself, what does a meaningful and fulfilling life look like? And before I even answer that question, I ask myself, why is living a meaningful and fulfilling life even important to me? The thing that is friend of mind is, am I being true to myself and am I living in alignment with my greater purpose? This is actually something that I wrote in my remarkable to help free my generation of limiting beliefs, thoughts, and notions and reconnect with their truest most authentic selves and in this definition all the things that i just mentioned when i compare myself to other people on social media none of that matters because that doesn't fit in with this and so if i can read this every single morning to remind myself this is what's most important to me i wouldn't even go on social media i'd spend my free time reading researching and looking into things that i care about so that is actually something that we're gonna do in the fifth section but before we get there the fourth thing is what role does career play in this successful life of yours? For some people, career is everything. You need it to help support your family or this is something you find so much joy in and you find so much purpose and meaning in. Maybe for some people, it's your nine to five only exists because you want to have a life outside of your nine to five. I have many friends like this. This is also great. It is your life. You can choose whatever you wanna do with it. So this is why it's helpful to see if your career and the successful life overlaps at all or not, or a little, just being more aware of this will help you compare yourself less with those around you. So for my career and how much it overlaps with my meaningful and fulfilling life, I feel like it's very like not exactly, but it's very close. When I did realize that we spend the majority of our existence working, I was like, how can I align my career with my purpose so that I can kind of 
hit two birds with one stone. With more clarity on what success means to us and the role our jobs play within all of this, with where you are in your career and with the reflections you just made, what are changes you can make so that you can live closer in alignment with this life that you want to live? This really is where you can have the most fun. So here's how I've gone about thinking through my next years. There's many things that come into play. The one thing that may not be as relatable but makes a lot of sense is that, you know, like I'm at an age, I'm of age where I'm starting to think about the family. <laughs> it hasn't started yet, but that is a very run of mind consideration of how that will impact the videos that I create or if I'm even gonna be creating videos. I don't know, I haven't thought through everything in detail and I've mentioned before that for as much as I've been doing YouTube and I still love the medium of video, I just feel this desire to branch out a bit more. So where I'm currently at right now is I would like to write more. I've been writing a lot for YouTube, outlining YouTube videos, scripting YouTube videos. However, I feel like writing for YouTube is very different than writing just to write. And sometimes I look back on what I wrote when I was in my 20s, when I was angsty and depressed and just going through so much. I look at what I write and I'm like, who are you? Like, how did you write so well. So tying this with how can we make small changes, the first and foremost thing is I should just write more. Like I want to journal more, I'm going to journal more, I should spend an hour a day working on just writing for the sake of writing, not for YouTube, not for whatever, but just writing. Like it could be writing scripts, it can be writing anything, it can be coming up with ideas, but I just want to write every day consistently and see where that goes. So that is the goal. That is the thinking. How I'm going to make this happen is to set a daily task in my to-do list or in my sensama as one of the first work things that I do. I can still meditate, read, have my morning routine, but this is the first work thing that I do before I check emails, before I do anything. Another thing that I mentioned earlier is my why it is that I'm doing anything that I'm doing. I'm also going to turn that into a daily task recurring around 6, 7 a.m. So it's the very first thing that I see. And when I see it, I'm going to look at it. I'm going to read it. I'm going to remind myself I'm gonna feel it. I'm gonna give myself time to just soak it in. And then once it's soaked in, I'll check that box and be like, okay, reminded. Hopefully that can help set my day tone off in a much better footing. I really do feel like we're all going through something and we're all going through it collectively. Don't be too hard on yourself. And if you're ever feeling some type of way, just rewatch the intro of today's video because I am sure all of us have grown in some way, shape or form, physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, anything, right? Like I think life kind of balances itself out in that way. I remember this saying I heard from, I think Chriselle Lim, where she's like, you can have it all, but just not at once. I think in different seasons of our lives, we just choose a few things. We're all going through different seasons where we're prioritizing different things and that's totally okay. And just know that when it's time and when you're ready, you can switch and you can reshuffle or you can reprioritize what is important to you in this new season. So with that, let me know what you guys think of this video. If there's anything that you wanna share about your career, about what it means to live a meaningful and fulfilling life to you in the comment section to maybe help inspire me and inspire other people within our potato fam. I have to get up to get closer to you guys because this is, you're very far away. Hug, oh my God, I can't even hug. <laughs> Bye! Boys up!